What's going on guys? So today I'm going to give you the top 10 tricks and tips that I have learned throughout playing the game. So let's dive right into it. All right, so first and foremost, the first thing that is super important to do whenever you're a very low level, it's going to be getting this right here. It's going to be a fire staff. You can see it's a wooden fire staff and unlocking this perk for travel because traveling is something you're going to be doing a lot of. So this right here is called fire dash. It's going to give you this ability. We'll talk about We'll show you in a second, but you're going to want the range as well because this is going to be your main source of traveling. Now, as you see up on the top of the mini map, it says 2300 meters to Flora. So I want to show you how fast you can go and how far you can go with this one ability. Oh, let's go right here. Wow, this thing. So there you go. It goes about 210 meters, which you might think is not a lot, but it actually is because you're going to be walking all over the place. And also with this ability, you can also go higher in the air and things. So it allows you to like, say for instance, go from there to over there without having to walk all the way around. So that's going to be my first tip. All right, guys, so this is going to be my second tip and it's going to be utilizing the market. So as you see once you get to level 20 and you go through kind of some more of the <coughs> main quest you right here in the town of viridius there is something called a market now this is a player driven market and this is a great way to buy gear um if you can, don't have gears great way to buy gear and also a great way to make money once you hit level 20 because you can see that you can actually come here and sell things like rock and animal skin so it's a great way to get gear if you oh there we go it's a bug but if you do not want to like let's say craft it or anything it is absolutely a great gear also they also have mounts as you see here they have a bunch of siege hurdles but sometimes they have uh pig mounts that you can get super easy way to get a mount but that's my second tip all right guys so my third tip is going to be using some type of software so that you can more easily have better keybinds as you see on my mouse right here for devious of creation i have a bunch of things that are macro this is my one ability that i use for casting my two ability that i use for casting and g which i use you know to interact on my mouse and if you go to the keyboard you can see devious of creation i have my e set to four so that i can use my mount this is going to help a lot especially whenever you start playing the game a bunch because it's just so much easier for your hands and your fingers so yeah guys that's going to be my third uh tip just make sure that you have some sort this is razor synapse of way that you can macro things or you know you can change your custom keybinds so that it makes it way easier and way more fun for you all right guys so my fourth tip and it's kind of a two for one has to deal with a, a flying mount so basically whenever you're on top of a mount you cannot change gear as you see here i'm trying to change gear I cannot change gear. However, whenever I go back down to the ground, I can actually go ahead and change my gear. Um, this works as well as whenever you're going to, let's say, um, let's get down from here, teleport. So whenever you come here and you're trying to teleport and you're on top of a mount, you can see you cannot teleport while mounted. But I just wanted to say that this right here, I thought it was a bug or something, but you absolutely cannot change gear while you're um, while you're hovering or flying. I'm not too for sure if it's the same while mounted on anything. I'm pretty sure it is. But yeah, guys, that's my fourth tip. It's kind of a two for one. All right, guys, so my next tip, which is my fifth tip, is going to have to be dealing with kind of more so the market as well but it's going to be trading other players in game <laughs> look at that guy beside me so basically what you want to do is head over to um the devious of creation trader hub now this is going to be a great way for you to make way more resources and get good gear and things this is something that you're gonna have to do later in game but more importantly it's about as you can see over here there's a bunch of people it's about creating relationships with these players in game and as you can see here how much are you selling how much you got stuff mostly celestial action ember and ember. 
this guy is making a request for the resources that he needs so i'm going to be able to farm that knowing 100 percent that this person is going to buy it you know he went to bed whenever he wakes up boom i'm gonna have an uh have a seller so i'm gonna have customers coming in all these guys are customers coming in and doing things like that so that is going to be the fifth tip and let's get into the next all one. right guys so the next one i'm going to be doing has to go ahead and deal with this right here which are like these fragments that you get in game this is going to be a two for one as well so what basically you can utilize these for is going to your attributes and you can change your attributes for these right here so it's a good thing to have and you get these well i guess it's a three for one you get these by farming uh mobs so as you see here, um, I'm going to defeat them and their faction tokens. Oh, that's what they are, faction tokens. Um, as you see, it's it's kind of easy. You're going to get these a lot through the game, but now I'm going to show you what you do with them. All right, guys. So once you got these faction tokens, you're going to see where I'm at right here in the town of Redius. There's this guy named Aldrich, whatever his last name is. You're going to talk to him. And now I'm going to tell you what you spend these on. So basically the things you want to spend these on are going to be this right here, the blessed uh, weapon enchant and the blessed armor enchant. And I know you're like, oh, why don't you want this? These ones right here are not worth it. The only one that's really worth it is the spider one, I believe. But this for 800 is not worth it. The worth it. Whenever you get further in game, which you're going to get to relatively quick, you're going to have to do a lot, a lot, a lot of enchanting. And that's when these come in place. These are super valuable. You're going to need a bunch of these later in order to get your gear to plus 10. Obviously, mine's not there because I haven't been farming it. But yeah, guys, that is what you're going to use those tokens for. Again, please do not buy this pet tier chest too unless you want one of those, but they're ultimately not worth it. This is worth way more value, especially in game. All right, guys, so the seventh tip is going to have to do with the flying mount and how to get it. So basically, you're going to come here. I'm going to make a video of this separately as well, farming this. But you're going to come right over here, like close to the catacombs, literally right here. And you're going to talk to this guy named Elden Wraiths, and then you're going to complete this quest. Now, this quest is going to be this right here. So you're going to collect troll meats from glacier trolls and troll meats from boulder trolls. I'll go over this later with the guide. But basically, you're not going to want to buy a mount for 25 30 million because you're going <coughs> to utilize that later in game or later doing whatever you're doing instead come here farm this mount it's not that hard um it can take up to two days luckily i got my mountain very first time but that's going to be my seventh tip just farming for this mount let's get into the next one all right guys so my eighth tip is going to be the fact that you can actually if you're harvesting resources and they're archers or something or mages that are attacking you you can actually stand behind the resource and harvest it while he's attacking you and it will not interrupt you as you see he's still hitting the uh the resource wow even whenever it's gone, he's still hitting the resource. That's insane. But yeah, that's going to be my eighth tip that you can use and utilize. Let's get into the next one. All right, guys. So my ninth tip for y'all is going to be learning how to parry. So basically, every time you see I'm not doing too well, but every time one of these things attack, instead of doing damage, you can see you can parry it. Now, it's going to be very crucial for you to learn the timing of these so that you can like not take damage. And also, as you see, it's not taking any damage from my uh, shield. So learning how to parry is something really uh, significant that you're going to have to learn because as you see there it also opens up a window for you to attack so it's super useful super good That's all right guys so my 10th and final tip for you is going to be learning about the harvest multiplier learning about luck as well as the drop multiplier this is super important for you especially as you get to end game this could be <laughs> look at this guy it's gonna be my final thing i'm saying so basically harvest multiplier increases the amount of resources that you can that you're going to attain through um harvesting and then luck is going to increase your total possible chance at getting the max amount so if it's 6 to 12 you're going to get 12 and this increases it let's say that there was base of two this will increase it to, to a base of four or two to four in between there and then drop multiplier does the same thing as harvest multiplier except for it does it for mobs so yeah guys that's going to be it i hope you enjoyed it i'm trying to make more and more content so stay tuned for the next one. Peace.